Hello and welcome to News Across Nigeria. I'm Olumide Makoli. On today's program, Code of Conduct Tribunal pronounces former Minister of Niger Delta, Gosde Rubebe, guilty of not declaring one of his assets in Abuja. Benue police launch manhunt for the arrest of the gunmen involved in the killing of two policemen in Ado local government area of the state. And Oyo and Oshun State disagree over ownership of Ladoke Akintala University located in both states. Thank you so much for joining us and we begin in Abuja, where the Code of Conduct Tribunal has pronounced former Minister of Niger Delta, Gusto Rubebe, guilty of non-declaration of his assets in the choice area in Abuja. The chairman of the tribunal, Justice Danladi Umar, today announced the forfeiture of the property at plot 2057 Asokoro District. Justice Umar explains that the testimony and document presented by the prosecution prove that the former minister is guilty as charged. He further states that while the minister claims that the property was on rent from the federal government, the rejection of the claim by his former landlord to allow him exercise his right over the property rendered the power of attorney useless. The former minister has been on trial for about 11 months. See, if you are the owner of a property and you have sold the property and the, other, the man who bought needed to do the needful and he has not done how does that affect the man who has sold? The property is no longer Orubebe's property. So how do you expect Orubebe to declare a property that does not belong to him? Now this tribunal has said, oh, the fact that the man who bought it did not do the needful, Orubebe must suffer for it. I don't think that is the contemplation of our law. Meanwhile, the ECOWAS Court of Justice has delivered judgment in the suit filed against the federal government by Colonel Sambo Dasuki seeking to exercise, rather, enforce his fundamental human rights. The court presided over by Justice Friday Woke rules that the search on Dasuki's house without a search warrant is unlawful and that the continued detention without trial is also unlawful since he's met the bail condition granted by the three courts before which he was arraigned. On the grounds by the federal government that he plans to destabilize the government, the court held that it's an arbitrary claim which is not a reasonable ground to detain him indefinitely since November 2015. The court also says that the applicant, like any other ECOA citizen, has a right to own and enjoy property without interference. It's the beginning of a new dawn in Nigeria. Even in the midst of the terror that is going on in the country, the law has spoken, the rule of law has prevailed, and it has spoken so loudly. And it's to now call upon the president to humble himself under the law. He said, no matter how high you may be, you are still under the law. That is, the, the court has declared that the invasion of his home, the seizure of his property, and his detention and continued detention is unlawful. So we call upon the federal government, who is playing to be a, a major role in the ECOWAS community, to honor the law and release uh, Colonel Dasuki promptly. What options? And staying in the North Central, the Benue State Police Command has launched a manhunt for the arrest of the gunmen involved in the killing of two policemen in Ado local government area on Sunday morning, leaving two others in critical condition. The Commissioner of Police, Mr. Bashir Makama, disclosed this to Channel Television in Makodi shortly after returning from a fact-finding visit to Ado, where some persons were arrested for interrogation. When Channel Television visited the Federal Medical Center in Makredi, Benue State, where the two survivors are being treated, the consultant says the officers are in stable condition after extensive surgery as they remain under close observation. They came in the dark, there was no light, and uh, found their way into the police premises from behind, which 
they took them on our ass. And it was a good fight. The boys tried, but you know, he who pulls the trigger first takes the day. They tried to go into the armory. There was, of course, resistance, not knowing that uh, others were also outside waiting. Uh, that was how they, they did it. And their, their bullets hit those uh, policemen. Actually, two of them had given up in the process of trying to revive them. And also the remaining two uh, are responding to treatment. We've made frantic efforts to be sure that they are stabilized. As regards uh, what we are doing or what, whether the arms, don't expect uh, this type of arms. I know I will recover those arms without being no doubt we will recover them. Uh, you just give us time. Investigation is ongoing. Uh, we have started some speed work. We are getting useful information and all. And very soon, we will come back again to tell you what we have done. Meanwhile, the former Senate president, Senator David Mark, is worried about attacks in parts of Benue State that has claimed several lives in recent times. The former Senate president, in a statement signed by his media assistant, Mr. Paul Mune, condemned the attack on the police station in the police post, that is, in Ado local government area. Senator David Mark wants security operatives to rise up to current challenges in the state. He's also asking citizens to cooperate with security agents to fish out the perpetrators of the heinous crimes. To party politics in Kogi State, the crisis rocking the People's Democratic Party appears to have recorded its casualty with the suspension of the state chairman, Sam Ohotu, and some members of the state executive committee. But the chairman's camp has dismissed the claims of the party on their suspension, insisting they remain the recognized leaders in the state executive council. After the Supreme Court judgment giving victory to the APC candidate, Yahya Bello, as governor of Kuki State, many would have thought it was time for the PDP to put its house together and present a strong opposition to the ruling APC. We, the concerned members of the state working committee... But what you see in the PDP camp committee. is deepening dispute and political crisis. Now members of the party say they are suspending their chairman for what they call abuse of office. Our party has now become the weeping boy in Kogi State. This is a party that has governed this state successfully, but upon the assumption of the current state chairman, our party is now nose diving. He turned the party into a one-man affair and he has ceased to become the state chairman. These allegations are not going down well with the suspended chairman as his group fires back, calling those behind the suspension a bunch of disgruntled party members who cannot add any value to the People's Democratic Party in the state. We are not happy over what happened, but nobody is above the law. The party supremacy is above everybody. But I'm here to serve them the, that uh, he has received their letter, but whatever the acting state chairman has to do, because he said he will set up a committee, a disciplinary committee, that will look into the matter. But whatever will be the outcome of the matter, no problem, you take it in a good fit. If the PDP is to remain a viable opposition party in Kogi State, then the party's leadership has no choice but to close ranks and accommodate all opinions to make the party strong again and ready to take on the All Progressives Congress, the APC. You're watching news across Nigeria. Coming up, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory to establish uh, informal markets for street hawkers to get them off the streets. Please stay with us.